In this video, we'll be unboxing the next wave of Soulblight Gravelord models, Veduka the Beast as well as Veladama, first of the Vicross. Watch this video till the end because we'll be sharing some sub-assemblies as well as some size comparisons for these models. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. Boy has it been an exciting time for all of us Age of Sigma fans in the studio. We have just completed our very ambitious and comprehensive video of how to paint Soulblight Gravelord models. In that video, we have covered many materials for Soulblight Gravelord models and if you are looking to paint up your Blood Knights, or other Soulblight Gravelord models, you might want to check out that video. Links will be in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive into next week's pre-orders, Raduka the Wolf and Belladama, first of the Vicross, and let's get them unboxed right now. And we're going to be unboxing Raduka the Beast and Belladama, first of the Vicross. Off my hands, I really think that these models are pretty, pretty pricey. Because at retail price, this is 75 Singapore dollars and this is also 75 Singapore dollars. And if you look at Lockervi, which her box is twice the size, a Lockervi is just a $96, just a little bit more expensive than this model. So I shouldn't be judging the model just based on the box and what's their price. We should just look into the box. So let's get the Exacto knife out. Let's look at what we get inside. Reduka the Beast. So right now, I'm not really sure which one should I paint because both models are really interesting. And why don't you just let me know in the comments below for the next video, which would you like to see me paint? Would you like to see me paint Reduka or would you like to see me paint Belladama? Let me know in the comments below, alright? So now let's just tear into the box and let's look at the sprues for Reduka. So we're going to get two half sprues, so this is half the amount of plastic that you will be getting for Lauka Vi. But of course, this looks really dense. And just look at the crisp detail, as usual for Games Workshop. And it looks like there's an extra Vicross head here. So I think there are some options for Vicross head option. Or maybe not. Okay, so let's tear into this and look at the instructions. I'll definitely be doing some sub-assemblies so that we can see how we can paint it up more easily. But I would say that it looks like the sub-assemblies are going to be Raduka himself. And then we're going to have the tree and the two other Vicross dudes by the side. Okay, so this is his wall scroll. And yeah, I don't really play the game so this is more for you players out there. Okay, so it comes on... Uh, this looks like a 60mm base, I'm not too sure. I'll go measure it up and I'll just put it in the video during post. Okay, so now let's look at Belladama. So Belladama, first of the Vicross, comes with two dire wolves. Really nice. Honestly, I really like the new box designs. They look very minimalist and I think the designer has done a really good job. Okay, so let's look at what we see in Belladama. Oh, the Belladama screw looks a lot less dense, at least for this screw. The other screw looks okay. You can see that the die wolves are actually pretty large. Well, um, got nothing much to say other than I'm really keen to see how this model looks when it's assembled. Let's try to look for Belladama's face. So you see, this is her face. The face is part of a Russian looking hat. And the face is really, really, really tiny if you look here. This is going to be a bit of a challenge to paint. But I really like all the little details. So you just look at her clothing here. Even the braids on her clothing have details in them. Details inside details. What more can you ask for? Games Workshop just gives details for days. Okay, so enough about her model for now. Let's look on and look at the instructional booklet. 
So first, first dire wolf probably would be one sub assembly. Let's see whether we can put Baladama as a separate piece from the dire wolf. It looks like it will be a little bit hard because Baladama's legs will be part of the dire wolf. But probably what I would recommend is I would take this as a sub assembly and I'll paint it separately. Okay. Oh, here's another challenge. Another part of Belladama is part of the Dire Wolf, but I guess this second part can go here. We'll see whether we can assemble this part here without having the top half being placed on. But regardless, the pose isn't that hard to paint both of them together. Putting them together as a sub-assembly might not be such a bad idea either. Okay, so the rock. So it looks like this Dire Wolf is uh, separate, that's good. Definitely painting Belladama separately from the rock okay so this is her war scroll not so much for me as i said because i'm not so much of a player okay more of a painter and yeah so that is it so let's compare base sizes both of them come on this massive 60 mm bases just correct me if i'm wrong when i'm done and let's move on to the assembly very very shortly so now that we've unboxed the models, I'm so excited to get them assembled. For this stage, we're going to be assembling the models and I'll be giving you some tips while I explore and assemble the models on my own. So right now, I'm going to be using these tools right here. So I'm going to be cutting the models off the sprue and filling in some gaps. So if you are ready to assemble the models, let's begin. So right here, we have the sprues for Reduka the Beast. And as you can see, the sprues have been numbered and we're just going to follow through the instructions for now. I'm just going to do up his lower body and I'm just going to first snip off the parts first. Remember to leave a bit of plastic between the sprue and the model. And then secondly, using the flat half of the single bladed nipper from God Hand, I'm just removing the sprues from the parts right now. Just giving it a quick inspection. Currently using a 320 grit sandpaper to sand off the excess nubs. You can also be using a rotary tool but that can be quite aggressive or you can use a knife to slowly slice away the bits. Do use a knife, just be very careful not to slice away any of your fingers. Okay, now I'm just using a fine tip applicator with a 402 super glue, it's just any other ordinary super glue. Okay. Just a little bit of super glue will do and I'm just trying to fit these parts together. As you can see, there's a potential for a really really big gap for this part right here. So remember we gotta fill in the gaps later. Let's hold it together for a little bit and I'm just gonna fill up the gaps right now. So currently the gap filler I'm using is AK Grey Party. I find it very good because when it dries, it is very highly sendable. Okay, just filling up the gaps in between all the other parts. I find that the biggest gap was near the right hand side of his body. Alright. Just giving it one more inspection and going back with a 320 grit sandpaper and just sanding away all the excess party that we've put on. Okay, I'm also going to be using a knife to remove some of the mole lines here. Just quickly scraping across the surface just to remove the excess plastic so that the mole lines don't appear as sharp as they used to be. You can also use this to remove the excess putty on those bigger and exposed areas of the model. Alright, now we're going to start to assemble Belladama. Just going to cut her up as usual. Just gonna leave the bit of plastic on the model first and then using the fine blade cutters and just trim them off. If you're watching for the assembly, here are some tips for the assembly but remember we have some sub-assemblies later on so remember you can always skip on to the next chapter for the sub-assemblies. So just as usual, gonna sand off some of the nubs. I find that 320 grit sandpaper is really good because it's fine enough to not leave too much scratch and it is coarse enough so that you can remove 
quite a bit of material. You can always bring it up to a higher grit sandpaper if you want to make this surfaces even smoother. Using the fine tip glue applicator again, we're just putting the parts together. Sorry for fumbling this portion here because parts are pretty organic and not sure how they really fit together. Just sending away some of the nuts so that the future parts can fit in. I find that GW is placing a lot of connecting area with nuts so you just gotta send that away. So as usual, I'm gonna be using the AK grey putty here. Just filling up the gaps of the rocks. And then I'm gonna send all this excess putty away. So don't worry if you put a little bit too much putty. Using a wet brush, I'm just removing some of the excess putty before it dries. Okay, so for Belladama, I found that majority of the gaps actually come on the wolf. The wolf actually has a lot of joining areas and it's really quite well hidden by the tufts of fur. However, just to be extra safe, I'm applying a little bit more putty over the areas with a very wet brush and I'm just going to clean that up. For her back, I've decided to paint a cape as a splitting cape because there's no other reason why she has a leather strap in between so I guess it kind of flays out. And now I'm using the same 320 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding down the excess putty on the wolf. Alright. Because these are such massive models in their own right, I'm going to be recommending some sub-assemblies so that you can paint these models and get them to the tabletop as quickly as possible. So I'm going to be sharing the sub-assemblies for Raduka, the Beast as well as Melodama right now. So let's look at how I subdivided this model and make painting as easy as possible. Okay, this is the sub-assemblies for Raduka, the Beast. As you can see, the base is here. I've put the cape separate from his body so I can paint the back and as well as underlings and the dripping blood as well as his shoulder pauldron. Okay, so for Belladama it's a lot easier. Just the rocks, two wolves. Belladama sitting on the wolves. And I've also put her head separate so that I can paint up her face properly. So as you can see, this allows me to paint the face a lot easier. Her head is not on her face and yeah these are my recommended sub assemblies so now those are the sub assemblies that i recommend before painting up the models let's look at some size comparisons and for these models i will be comparing them to a woofen watch skeleton from the curse city base set so let's check it out right now so right here we have reduka the beast as you can see it's really towering over the woofen watch skeleton and it's really a lot bigger than what I expected because the boxes came really small I didn't expect this model to be that huge so right here we also have Belladama compared to the Overwatch skeleton I think this is really really amazing and it's quite value for money considering uh, the box actually looks quite small but I'm impressed by the size of the miniature Okay, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to be including the size comparison of Chaduka the Beast versus Reduka from Curse City. As you can see, he's a lot bigger and yeah, really excited to paint him. So let me know which one you would like me to paint, Reduka or Belladama. Games Workshop did not let us down this time round and I would say that these models are so awesome. I will be painting up Raduka the Beast in a subsequent tutorial coming out really soon. So stay tuned and stay locked to our channel. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. So if you found this video useful and if you could give us a like and subscribe keeps the studio lights on and keeps me producing awesome unboxing videos such as this one. Want to support the channel even more directly? Head on to our Patreon, get a whole year of painting content which we have been producing over the past year or so. Thank you guys once again and thank you to my patrons for allowing me to do this. I hope to see you guys in the next painting tutorial soon. See you!